All right. Hello, Wellington. Um, it is so good to have you guys here with us tonight. I know this is different, having a, a live event through Let's Talk Wellington. Uh, maybe a first, as far as I know. I, I may have missed it. I don't know. Um, but we are excited to be here with you tonight. This is an event where we are going to be talking in kind of a roundtable fashion uh, about how we can thrive during this time of pandemic, um, specifically how we can do that here in Wellington during this time of pandemic. Uh, so we have tried to, I don't know that we have a full six feet on every uh, thing. We're trying to, to do the social distancing deal here, though. Um, and, and seriously, we are so glad that you're here. We hope that you will just uh, enjoy the time, just sit down, get comfortable. Um, as we go through questions and walk through questions, you may have questions that come to mind or you may have thoughts that come to mind um, at, related to the answers that we give. And and we encourage you to just list those in the comment section. We may not be able to get to those tonight. Uh, we won't be able to get to those tonight, but we will be able to go back and answer those questions um, uh, after this live video is over. So we, we encourage you to do that. Engage, interact, be a part of this. Um, in case you don't know, this is a panel of pastors, and so we will be looking at answers from a biblical perspective, um, but we will be doing that from a very practical practical perspective as well, uh, so that we, we really hope that um, this will be a time that's beneficial to all of you who are tuning in, regardless of where you stand on faith, regardless of where you stand in terms of struggling with this uh, pandemic right now. We hope it'll be a time that's really beneficial for you. So I'm going to ask that we just get started and uh, introduce ourselves and our churches uh, so that you know who you are actually looking at and listening to. So, John? That's fantastic. Well, my name is John as well, uh, John Wilhite. I'm the new kid on the block here in Wellington. Uh, all these beautiful men up here have been here for quite a few years, but uh, I'm the pastor of Stonebridge Church. We are a new church in town, um, and we are looking to be launching into public services in the month of September. And so we're super excited to be here, and I appreciate being invited. I'm uh, Joshua Griffin, and it's, uh, it's really been fun being here in Wellington all these years, and we run the uh, Wellington Filling Station. So it's a service station, so that's pretty fitting for <laughs> church because we didn't come to uh, be served but to serve. And uh, so we, uh, we enjoy being able to see the unity and coming together and uh, seeing what God's doing in our family uh, throughout this whole, uh, this whole community. Good deal. Rick. Yeah, I'm Rick Carlson, and, and I've been uh, in this community about 25 years now, and it's been such a joy to serve Wellington and watch Wellington grow. We pioneered uh, River of Life, like I said, about 25 years ago. So as you can imagine, we've seen a lot of changes, and a lot of changes have occurred inside of our church. Um, I really, truly uh, love what's going on here tonight and the, the way this is, is coming out. Um, you know, God has just done so many great things amongst us, but... One thing I do want to say is, is, man, our heart at River of Life is really for families, to build strong families, to connect people to God and, um, and connect one another, each other to God. And so we're, uh, we, we believe in teaching the Word because without the Word, you just simply won't have any power in your life. And so at River of Life, we, we just really try to teach the Word because strong families come out of strong biblical truth. If John at that end of the stage is a new kid on the block, I'm at the right spot. I'm at the other end of the spectrum. I'm the old <laughs> kid on the block. I'm Mark Gabbert, pastor at Zion Lutheran Church. Um, Zion's not quite the oldest church in town. We're 106 years old now. <laughs> I, I'm not. The, the, uh, the church, yeah. Yeah. I'm a, yeah. I've only been there 105 of those years, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I've been pastor at Zion for 10 years. Before that, I was in youth and children's ministry. Um, I would describe Zion as probably the most traditional of the churches in town, just even by our structure, the old building we're in. Uh, but we, um, we are a church committed to not only taking care of each other, but we feel very strongly in community service. And that that is one of the callings that the Lord placed upon his church, his people, his leaders, uh, to follow Jesus' example and be a servant. 
Good deal. And um, if I haven't had a chance to meet you, my name is John Richardson. I'm the pastor of Trailhead Church, and uh, we've been around for about three years now, a little over three years. And um, really, we, we just kind of boil everything down to one simple phrase. We want to authentically live in love like Jesus at Trailhead. I know a lot of people would say, hey, I'm not so sure about the church, but I believe in that Jesus guy. I like the Jesus guy, right? And so we are just trying to live what he lived, to love the way that he loved, um, and to, to do that as a, as a community. Um, at Trailhead Uh, and so love that we can be together with all of these different churches and leaders tonight and I think like we said earlier there's going to be some really good stuff that you'll get out of this uh, if you hang with us so uh, one of the one of the running jokes about pastors I'm sure all of you guys have heard this but one of the running jokes is that we only work one day a week right so Sundays or Saturday whatever uh, Sunday is our day of the week to work um in reality, all of us throughout the weeks are dealing with a number of things, and typically a huge chunk of our weeks are spent dealing with issues related to relationships, um, emotional health, and spiritual health. And so, honestly, uh, those are the three areas that we're going to be talking about tonight, and so that's part of why we thought this would be a really good panel of guys to talk about this, is because... These are guys, uh, including myself, that are wrestling with this stuff in individuals' lives every single week. And so I I think there's going to be some really cool perspective to this. But the first question uh, that we are going to dive into and start looking at is the question of relationships. And so you should uh, be able to see the questions on the screen behind us here. Uh, But the first question that we are going to ask is, what are the keys for thriving relationally during this time? As you guys know, if you are stuck in a home with somebody for an extended period of time, you're going to find out whether or not you like them, right? <laughs> and so there can be a lot of issues that rise uh, in terms of relationships during times like this. So we're just going to start the, the roundtable discussion here. And like I said, if you have questions, if you have thoughts, if you have comments, please insert those into the comment section so that we can go back and and see those and even respond to those later. But Joshua, will you start us off? Absolutely. Thanks, John. Um, You know, when I think about these types of situations that we face, uh, believers are built for these types of situations. And uh, I was looking in Romans 12, and I want to just read it real quickly because God leads us by the word. And uh, it says in verse 9, it says, Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil and cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love in honor and give preference to one another, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer. Let your family, let your neighbors help you build trust. And we hope that you see that you can trust us as pastors and as churches. Um, I've been a coach for 21 years in this community, and you better have the trust of the people that you're going to be entrusted. Pastor Mark, you've been a coach as well, alongside of us. we coach together. And, and we have to have trust and, and hope and faith in each other in order to build a relationship. That has to be. Yeah. I think of the ingredients uh, necessary for strong relationships. Trust, right there at the top and close to the top, I think is something that maybe we don't think about enough, and that is the quality of humility. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things that strikes me uh, in some of the breaking relationships we're seeing on a local, regional, national, global scale is that um, a lot of people assume that they're right. And um, I had a good friend, the late Dennis Clicker, he was a retired mm-hmm. pastor, a member of Zion. He once told me of something a seminary professor used to say, that, that all of us are going to take a little heresy with us. They're not getting any feed or anything. <laughs> Which leads to the back of my phone. Mm-hmm. I don't have it all figured out. I have my phone. I'm not right about everything. There's a lot of things I don't understand. And I think I have a lot better chance of 
engage in a healthy relationship with someone when I come across as not the one that has it all figured out. Uh, and, and the model for that is Jesus, the fact that I was uh, led to Philippians chapter 2. If there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete, be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. And here it is. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than themselves. Let each of you look not to your own interest, but to the interest of others. And I think that's been something that's bonded the churches together here and the pastors to get to here. Because we all have our theological convictions, and we're strong in those convictions, and they're not all the same. But we all, I think, approach one another with enough humility that we're willing to listen and learn and grow and share and agree to disagree if necessary without letting it attack the relationship. So I believe that for building and maintaining healthy relationships, humility is very important. I like what you said there, Mark, inside. You know, people come up to you sometimes, they go, man, I don't agree with what you said, and I just tell them, I don't agree with everything I say either. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> And I was just going to piggyback because honestly, you stole my answer there, Mark. So I, I was looking at it a little different and in terms of a little different angle. But, you know, if um, even if you hadn't been around the church, you have probably heard the story of David and Bathsheba, right? The, one of those black eyes in the Bible that um, if you haven't read a whole lot of the Bible, you may be surprised that stories like this are in there. I would encourage you to go read it. There's a lot of crazy stories in the Bible. Um, but as, as I think about that story, uh, David did something that caused a huge fracture in community. Um, he hurt a number of relationships. He ended up having got killed um, over this affair that he had. And um, I, I look at that and I, I think, you know, even though we don't intend to do those kind of things, a lot of times that's where we end up in relationships. We make bad decisions. We, we say things we wish we wouldn't have said. And, and all of a sudden we have these fractured relationships. Well, the, the thing that ends up being part of the saving grace in that story is there's a guy named Nathan who confronts David about what he's done. And after he confronts David, uh, we, we have a response of David that's recorded in the Psalms that shows his heart and the way that he responded to that. But basically what David does is two things. He, first of all, exactly what Mark says, he comes to a point where he says, I have messed up. <laughs> I got this all wrong. I, I was wrong in my relationship with God. I was wrong in the way that I treated these people. And so there's a deep sense of humility. And so I would say if you're, if you're struggling in a relationship, if you're struggling with the people in your home, that's a huge place to start is that, that place of humility. But the second thing that David did that I think is really important is uh, he just got really honest. And sure, he kind of got called on the carpet, right? But he came to the place where he finally said, uh, look, I have messed up. Uh, and he did it. He, he just spoke honestly about what he had done and where he had been. And so I think as we look at how we do relationships well, in those moments where it feels strained, in those moments where it feels fractured, somebody has to take the lead to say, I'm going to be humble and I'm going to be honest. And I think that's a huge starting point for having healthy relationships. So I would like to just add one thing. And I know that you're short sure on time on this. And I'll try to be brief. Uh, but I do think we would be remiss if we didn't mention um, why it is that we feel so driven for relationships. Um, you know, even, even when, I, when I was not in a relationship with Christ, I still felt the need that I had to have some sort of connection in my life. And I think that we see that in you know, Genesis specifically, uh, in chapter 2, when God creates man and he says, it's not good that man should be alone. Uh, God created us in his image, is what we're told in uh, Genesis 1. And so part of that image is, is the, the, the ability and the desire to connect the relationship. And that desire is in our heart for one another. Uh, before I knew the Lord, my closest friends were 
were closer to me than family, and it's because of that connection that we built. Um, but when God opened my eyes to see that the desire for a relationship is actually placed there, that I might seek a relationship with Him, and that that relationship was possible through Jesus Christ and His Son. And how they could actually enter me into a relationship with the God who created all this. Like, man, that changed everything in my life. That moment led to this moment, right? And so, you know, for anybody that's out there that felt the same way I did, there's just something missing in this relational part of who I am. That could very well be the relationship that God created you to have with yourself. And that relationship is possible because of the sacrifice of His Son, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I know any one of these pastors would desperately desire to have an ongoing conversation with you about what it means to enter into a relationship with God. Jesus. So, it's great. Good stuff. And that's uh, a great, great place to end that question, I think, because that brings it back to, look, we're going to hit more on that and some of that stuff in the, the spiritual health portion in a few minutes, but so, so true, so appropriate. So the second question that we're going to be uh, walking through is a question that is honestly pretty intimately related to the first one, <laughs> um, uh, because we are talking about emotions and how to deal with this time emotionally, and, and again, we are in a unique time where we are we are separated from a lot of community that we normally have right now, which causes a lot of things to surface in terms of our emotions. Um, it's it's surfaced in some really unhealthy ways in some people, and it, you know, even this past weekend, I, I know of um, uh, a very prominent pastor on the East Coast who committed suicide. Um, and so uh, there, there are a lot of people that are hurting emotionally, struggling emotionally. So um, I, I'll turn to you first, Mark. But what would you say in terms of how to, to thrive emotionally during this time of pandemic? Well, it's, it's an interesting word, thrive. Um, and that would be that outcome we would desire. I think it's all right for some people to recognize that right now, thrive might be a peer we need to reach to survive. Um, there are a lot of hurting people. And this isolation has made that pain harder, harder to bear. And um, I don't know, people who know me would recognize that unless I'm coaching and yelling at referees or athletes, I tend to kind of not let a lot of emotions show. And I would not recommend that as being healthy. Um, I think uh, to have healthy emotions, we need to be able to express them. And also, and I don't know if everybody would see it this way, but it's the way I look at it. I, when I read the Psalms, I notice that in many cases they're upset with God. They're not liking how things are going. And in sometimes they express that anger towards God. And I believe that we have a Father that's capable of listening to that, that it is okay for us to express our emotions, even if it's anger, disappointment, uh, to express them to our Father and expect a listening ear. And then to recognize that God also listens to us and supports us through each other, and that we need to nurture those relationships within our family, within if we're members of a church family, neighbor to neighbor, whatever it takes, we need to nurture relationships. And within those relationships, we can express emotions and, and build healthy emotions. So I guess that's where I would start. I like the the fact too that uh, over in Proverbs four twenty one twenty two it talks about how we're supposed to guard our hearts with all diligence, and it's interesting because in a time like this, it's easy to you're at home and you're on the internet and you know you're watching things and you're with your family and your close quarters, but it's easy to start getting into that that mindset of. Uh, I've got to watch this, and I've got to see what they're saying. i got to see what they're saying. And remember, your heart, everything is processed through your heart. It even says in, in Scripture that we think with our heart. And it's even a, 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 a thing that, you know, 
doctors will tell you and that they studied. But in this, in this thing, we, we need to realize, guard our hearts, because we're going to hear a lot of stuff. Remember the things that you've learned. Remember the important things of, of family and, and, and community, but not be in that place where we just start t taking everything in. I mean, I, I, it's, we have a heavenly father, just like you said. The whole Bible is basically summed up in relationship with God and with each other. And so we have this heavenly father, and it's important to just stop if, you, if you're watching too much news or too many things about, well, we think it's from this, we think it's from that. And I'll tell you what, I've never seen it like this. But but we need to stop and just say, Father, you know, call me. Give me that peace. Help me to guard my heart so that I don't just go all over the board. And then talk with those, your, your family and your loved ones. We've been doing that. We just gather around at night and, well, what do you think of this? And then what does it say? You know, what does God say about it? He created everything. You know, he created us. And then we've, we've been the ones that have been confused about it. But talking it through, but guarding our hearts, not just letting everything. We're not supposed to process it all or we'll turn into Velveeta. You know, we got to let go and let God. Yeah, I think a lot of people are feeding their fears, you know, and not feeding faith enough. And, and boy, if I watch enough news, I'm right there with them. Uh, you know, the fear can escalate and the concerns. And so I, uh, I like that point. I think it's very important. We want to make sure that we're careful with what we feed ourselves. Yeah, you know, Romans 10, 17 is, is really powerful because it says, Now faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And, and I can't tell you how many men's lives have changed because I point them to the word and faith gets built up inside of them. And I would just encourage you, Wellington, and, and our local churches, and, and, and whether you're a Christian or not, you know, there's all kinds of forms of faith. And, and even fear is a form of faith. You know, when people worry and have fear... Um, we're going to probably act outside of the plan of God for our life. And so God gave me a scripture that I read to the, the pastors uh, about two weeks ago when we gathered for prayer. And out of Isaiah 43, it says, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name, and you are mine. I, I think when we understand whose we are, it helps us understand what we are. When we know we belong to him, and then the emotional side of things that, that we say, how do I overcome emotionally? Well, I'm going to go to my father. I'm going to go to the word, and I'm going to let faith. You know, there's no power over Satan outside of faith. I, I was counseling a man this week and, and a couple times, and, and, and I let him know that he needs to read the word every single day. And so everyone in my church knows that Pastor Rick and I've got a lot of people reading Ephesians chapter 1 because it tells you what God did for you and it tells you who you are in Christ. You know, the same author of Ephesians 1, author Galatians 2.20, and he says, he said, it's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. And the life that I now live, I live by faith in the flesh in Christ Jesus. And I tell you what, Pastor Mark, when, when, when I counsel men and, and, and women alone or families, it's like when they figure out who they are, the emotion of decisions and, and worry and things like that, it's like, man, I know where I'm going now. And I know who I belong to. I think so many people want to think that they own the earth or they're in charge of the earth, and, and we're not. We, we all belong to God. We're his creation. And as Pastor John said, we belong to him because he made us in his similitude, in his likeness there in Genesis chapter 1. Go for it. Oh, okay, well, I hate to keep interrupting there, but uh, yeah, so, so for me, when, when we, we got these questions and, you know, I was thinking about, uh, you know, how to thrive emotionally. Uh, I don't know how to thrive emotionally without a pandemic, probably, I mean, to be honest. But when, but when I think back to when I was completely driven by my emotions and just how my life was always so turbulent, I mean, I would be on mountaintops one second, and I'd be in valleys in the second, and the next second, this book does not want to stay. And, uh, you know, and it's just like, it was this seesaw just back and forth so dramatic, and... Um, you know, looking back over my life, I came to, the, you know, started living for the Lord when I was about 24 years old. I was already married, had a baby. I mean, I, I was pretty far along at that age, but 
um, just thinking about those emotions. And now that I'm in, in Christ, I think about what Jesus said in Matthew 7 uh, when he was given his Sermon on the Mount, which is a famous teaching that Jesus did, if you didn't know, sitting on the side of a mountain, no big deal. And um, he said, whoever hears my words and does them is like a man who builds his house on the rock. And when the waves come and the wind comes and the rain comes and beats against that house, it stands secure. And whoever doesn't do what I'm teaching is like a fool who builds his house on the sand. And that's who I was. I mean, I can, looking back, I was a fool. I'm still kind of a fool, but my house was built on sand. And any time a hard time came, I was wiped out. And so I would be high one second, wiped out the next. I would rebuild that house and it would get wiped out again. Um, but when I founded my life on Jesus, I noticed that as Christ was living through me, my emotions came into control. And when the Corona 19s of the world come against you, you know, my emotion says this is terrible and what's happening. But the spirit within me says God's in control and he has these things and it just keeps my emotions going um, the right way. Sorry about that. That's good. Yeah, that's good. And I would just tie together what has been said a couple of times here, honestly, um, in, in guarding your heart um, and then founding your life on the rock of Jesus. Um, I think in, in two ways, uh, it's it, you can see what we need to do emotionally there. So first of all, yeah, you, you guard, but at the same time, I think what we would see in Scripture is that he says while you guard what comes in, uh, you also want to be very intentional about being focused in what you're pursuing. Right, right? that's true. And I, I just think of a story of, um, uh, it's really a kind of a crazy story, but there's a story of a, a Canaanite woman who comes up to Jesus and Jesus is outside of Israel at this point, and she is asking for healing uh, for her family member. And she comes uh, for her child, and she comes and she is basically begging Jesus. And it's almost, if you read the story in Matthew 15, it's almost like Jesus is just dismissing her, putting her off and putting her off, right? He's really testing her is what he's doing. And, um, but, but she does not give up, and she continually keeps coming and continually keeps asking and so, you know, she's in a moment of brokenness. She's in a moment of crisis. Her family is hurting. And what she does is she gets this laser focus where she says, I am going to get to Jesus, and I'm going to make sure I get my question answered from him. Right? And so I love that. I love that she's guarded about what she's letting in, but at the same time, she's very focused about, I am getting to Jesus in this. And um, I think that's a critical principle for, for being healthy emotionally. Yeah. Um, in, in a time like this. So uh, last question that we're going to ask, and uh, we will wrap up with this question, but uh, we wanted to, to try to limit our time to about 45 minutes here today. And um, so we're about on track if we don't get too long we need to <laughs> this last one to do that pretty well. So the, the last thing that we wanted to address is, again, this question of thriving, which, as Mark said, is the goal. It's out there. It's not, it's not easily attainable at times. But how can we thrive not only relationally, not only emotionally, but how can we also thrive when it comes to our relationship with God. That's been talked about a number of times, so I think it's an appropriate place to kind of land here. How can we thrive in that? Rick, will you take us there? Yeah, certainly. Thank you, um, John, for, uh, for this opportunity for all of us, by the way. Thank you for, for hosting this. When, when John asked me uh, which, which question I would take, I, I felt very strongly that, that spiritually is an area that um, we have to shore up um, in our churches and, and in our lives. A lot of times churches have become so user-friendly that we're, we're spiritually not helping people the way we should. And so the Lord took me over to Second. Peter chapter 1 and it says grace and peace in, in verse, chapter 1 verse 2 grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life pandemic is a part of life 
crisis is a part of life. And so he's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature. So we are not in and of ourselves divine, but God is. And we partake of that. And, and if you're listening out there today, every one of us pastors would love to have, have a conversation with you about how you step over into partaking of a divine nature with Jesus Christ, where we in and of ourselves are not deity, only He is. But when we become children of God, then He allows us to, to partake of that divine nature in that someday we will walk with Him in a glorified body. In, in a, not a deified body, but partaking of His divine nature. And when we do that on earth, that Jesus said, pray that you may have heaven on earth. And, and I think that sometimes we on earth struggle through these pandemics. We struggle through crisis. We struggle. And, and let, me, let me tell you, no one up here is making light of any crisis that anybody's going through. We're saying we're here for you. And, and I think that as, as I, I kind of wrap up my portion of this question, I think that if you can find a way to, to get to one of our churches and, and really hear what the word that is being preached and participate in the worship, it, it will flat change your life because you're looking at a guy that was away from Christ, was rebellious. And, and rebelling against my family, against my father, against every single thing of authority. And when I finally submitted that to God, he began to move me in a path that changed everything. And, and I hope for the good, it, it's been a good thing that, that our family moved here. Uh, kids were anywhere from one years old. My, my son Sam was one, year, one and a half year old, and my oldest daughter went, went to the middle school. And uh, you were here, you remember those days. And, and, um, and so I think that, you know, if you could look at what God can do with your life, when you become a child of God and partake of that divine nature, I promise you, your whole life will change right before your eyes. I would just say, I mean, I, I, I totally agree with everything you said, Rick. I would just say, um, in, in addition to that, or maybe as a, my mind is, is a very simple mind, all right? So just to pull it down on a very simple level, um, I think of, when Jesus was going through crisis, at the very end of his life, he knows he is going to die. In fact, just hours before he is going to be crucified, there's a point where he is out in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he, he gets out and he gets on his face and uh, it's so emotional and so, um, so, so uh, I don't know the word to use. He's hurting so much over this situation that um, in the book of Luke it tells us that his sweat was like drops of blood. It was so heavy at that time. Um, but, but really what ends up happening is Jesus gets out there and he just prays. He gets alone with the Father. And, and he, that, that's where he has the famous statement. He says, not my will, but yours be done, Father. And, and so all, all I am saying with that is, as I think about thriving spiritually, and, and this just goes exactly in line with what Rick was saying, I think it has to be about relationship, right? It's yeah. what we've talked about all along. It has to be about that relationship, just like it was for Jesus and the Father in that moment. It wasn't about following a set of rules that had been laid out. It wasn't about a bunch of do's and don'ts. Um, the way that we thrive spiritually is we actually get to know God, and we start to walk with Him and do life yeah. with Him. It's not doing life for Him and trying to, you know, work our way to this this place of being good spiritually. It's just doing life with Him. And so I think the relationship is where we're going to thrive. Yeah. We're going to thrive spiritually. Yeah, that just is uh, it really piggybacks what I want to say right on that because there are a lot of people, and I talk to people from all different walks of life, and they'll say, "I'm spiritual," you know, and and, and, and the truth of the matter is they are because we're, we're made in God's image, which isn't flesh. He became flesh. But, but to understand that sometimes we, we think, well, I'm spiritual. I'm not religious. Well, what we need to understand is you're both because God has called you. He has a plan and a purpose for your life. And so when we think of being.
being spiritual, I think people feel like they're put down if, if they don't think deeper. And uh, people do. They think very deep, but they can't necessarily connect with God until they come in contact with, they have an encounter with the Most High God. And so when people do that, all of a sudden it's like, now I understand. I am spiritual because I've been searching. I've been seeking. I want to find purpose for my life. I want to find answers. And then when they realize they've come in face to face with the Creator, that changes everything. I mean, everybody needs that encounter. So if you're out there and you're saying, well, I'm spiritual. I'm a good person. Well, none of us is good according to the perfect righteousness of Jesus, but we're trying to do what's right. If you can connect with God, then you're going to be able to see your purpose and you're going to be able to feel his grace come in and he's going to say, you don't have to perform for me anymore. Just get to know me. Relationship. I'll go, and then you can wrap us up. <laughs> this book is going to die. Okay. So, the only thing I would say, and it, it, I think it goes right with what you said, John. Um, everything comes down to relationship. Everything. I mean, that's what we, we believe wholeheartedly is one of our foundations at, at Stonebridge. And so, everything comes down to relationship. And once you've come into that relationship with Jesus Christ, there is one call on our life at that point, and that's to abide in him. In John 15, it tells us that if we will just abide in Christ, Christ living through us will produce the fruit in our life. And that fruit is just the good in our life. God does the work through us in our relationship with Jesus Christ. And as we abide with him, as we walk with him, as we're doing life with Jesus... Jesus transforms us into his image and it's not a work that we have to do it's not something we have to you know beat ourselves into God does the work and that's what's so beautiful about that relationship is we are called to abide and as we abide he works and lives through us Good. Oh, there you go <laughs> yeah I, I'm sure any one of us could say a lot on this question um, you know, as I think about how the question's worded, I'd, I'd say, you know, I think we can thrive spiritually during a pandemic a lot better than we tend to during peace and prosperity. Uh, C.S. Lewis, in a book uh, that I understood about maybe 25% of, <laughs> called a, The Problem of Pain, uh, the one thing I remember from that book was this statement that pain is God's megaphone to awaken a deafened world. And... I think situations like this, I don't really see God in heaven zapping us in a punitive way with pandemics, hurricanes, things like that. I don't think theologically that way. Uh, I'd rather think that it's an opportunity for us to maybe uh, have some of the things that get our focus all in these different tangents and different directions and spread us then kind of taken away for a time. And now we have the time and the space to rethink, recalibrate, assess our lives. And when we do that, I think we are ready then to recognize how far we fall short. Each of us, pastor, lay person, we all fall short of the glory of God by a long, long ways. Yeah. And yet each and every one of us has been redeemed each and every one of us is loved by an abba father uh, with an unconditional love and um, i think during times like this we can rediscover and and redevelop that that spiritual sense of our needs and god's answer to our needs absolutely that's good well, guys, I want to say thank you to, to you for taking your night to do this. I want to say thank you to you guys that have been online watching um, and that have participated with us through asking questions or engaging with comments. I'm, I'm just going to go out on a limb here, and um, I'm, not a, I'm not a betting man, but I'm going to go out on a limb, and I'm going to guess that there may be like at least one heckling comment on Let's Talk Wellington. And that's okay. Heckle us if you want to. Um, we'll have John Wilhite heckle you back, all right? So, 
<laughs> no, uh, seriously. <laughs> no forehead jokes, please. You'll be hearing from me. We didn't get the stuff before. We didn't. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, seriously, let us know your thoughts, and we will try to follow up if you have questions or thoughts that you have posted on Let's Talk Well. Hey, John, I'm really proud of you because you didn't ask them for an offering. I'm, I'm really glad of that. That's right. Proud of you, buddy. Well, thank you. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm working on that. So, um, and seriously, before we go, I wanted to give each of these guys uh, one opportunity to tell you how you can find their churches online. So you may have watched this and have some questions about, hey, how can I connect to you online? So if you wouldn't mind, let's just let's just go around and share our website. And if you have a, uh, if you want to let them know where they can find live stream services or anything like that. So. Yeah, sure. So like I said, we're not fully up and going as far as fully launched at this point. Uh, God's doing some really cool things. But we do have a Facebook page, Stonebridge Church in Wellington. Uh, just throw that in there. It'll, it'll bring, it, bring you to us. You'll be able to see some of the media we have on there, uh, kind of what our heart is. Uh, and then within the next two weeks, there will be StonebridgeWellington.com up and running uh, as far as a website where you can go and connect to us that way as well. We meet currently in small groups. And so we're meeting inside of homes, sharing a meal together. Uh, they have to suffer through listening to me talk from the Bible a little bit. Uh, the kids have a, a full-blown kids' church going on during that time uh, where they get to have fun and, and be ministered to, and we're having a great time doing that. So uh, you can look us up on Facebook, let us know, and I'll give you all the details if you'd like to join us. I think we're all meeting in small groups right now, aren't we? Oh, true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. Um, you can go to, we, we do a Facebook Live on Saturday nights at 6. <laughs> and then we also do a Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. Uh, you can just go to Wellington Filling Station and, and catch us on Facebook. And uh, for the time being, that's, that's how we're reaching out and uh, being able to stay connected with you. And we, we also like you to uh, bring scripture on and, and be active with us so we're not just speaking a, a word or a message we're asking you hey what's God speaking to you what's he saying use your gifts so when you get online with us if you have prayer requests we want to we want to do that together so it creates uh, you know some some relationship <laughs> And again, my name is John Richardson. I'm at uh, Trailhead Church here in Wellington, and you can find us at trailheadwellington.org or search for us on Facebook. Um, just don't make fun of our media. We have slowly been getting better, and so we've got people that actually know what they're doing, where we're getting there now, okay? But, um, yeah, you, you can find all past uh, services, um, literally from the very first service that we ever did here in Wellington on either one of those sites. Great. Hey, again, I'm Pastor Rick Carlson, River of Life Fellowship, and you can find us online at www.riveroflifewellington.org. We also have uh, our, our Facebook page, which is River of Life Fellowship. On Sunday mornings at 10, we have the luxury of having a big parking lot and a lot of uh, open field. And so we do a live service, a drive-in service. So if you're not doing anything on Sunday mornings or you'd like something to do and you'd like to hear more about this church and River of Life and our church family, uh, 10 o'clock on Sunday mornings in our church parking lot, which is just west of town at the first bend that you take. Instead of taking the bend and going to Fort Collins, go straight. You'll come right into our church parking lot, and uh, you'll be welcomed and warmly greeted, and we'd love to get to know you better. God bless you. Mark Gabbard again from Zion, Wellington. Um, Zionofwellington.org is our website, um, and search for us this is all new lingo to me search for us on facebook at zion lutheran of wellington uh we're slowly the old dog slowly learning some new tricks and catching up a little bit on the technology side of things but we record our services our services are liturgical somewhat traditional uh and yet at the same time we uh, blend our services with contemporary worship so if you want to get a feel what uh, as to what our worship is like we post a link to our services on our website and Facebook as well. Good deal. Thank you guys again for doing this. Thanks for being with us online, and we hope to connect to you soon. We will see you next time. Thank you, John. Thanks, John. Yeah, thanks, John.